Hey YouTube, it's your girl, Dr. J, and today I want to talk about sensory processing disorder, or like I like to call it, kryptonite for gifted children. And the reason why I call it kryptonite is because I'm about to bring out my inner nerd, but it is so similar to the way that kryptonite affects Superman. So, if you have seen the movie Man of Steel, the newest latest Superman movie, there's a scene from Kel El's childhood. And in the scene, he's in school and he's looking around and his x-ray vision is going wild. He's hearing all this stuff. The sun is too bright. It, it, his senses is, are just going into overdrive. And so he runs into a coat closet to try to get away from it all. And really, that is probably the most accurate visual of what happens to children with sensory processing disorder I have ever seen. And the reason why it is very akin to kryptonite is because, as you know, with Superman, kryptonite is, is the thing that he lived on. I mean, he, he's from the planet Krypton. He, it, it was what really made him Superman. And with gifted children, their senses are the thing that they live on. For instance, we know when a child is very young, when a child is a baby, they learn through their five senses. And a lot of times as we get older, we stop relying so much on our five senses and we start to learn really by the thinking process. My theory is that with gifted children, they never cut off that learning through the five senses. They pick up so much information just from living life. However, like what happened to Superman when that when he's exposed to Krypton outside of that good environment, it becomes deadly for him. And that's what happens with gifted children. We know that babies have to be in a very protective environment, a very small environment, because people will say, that light's too bright for that baby. That's too loud for that baby. There's, you know, there's too much going on. But we stop to have that protective covering as we get older. And what happens is gifted children, they learn so much through their senses. Their senses tend to work at a much more heightened level. And when they leave that protected environment of the home and all this stuff starts to come at them, you find them under tables, in coat closets, hiding in corners. That's, that's their way of trying to protect themselves from the world that's just way too big, way too loud, too strong for them. Let me give you some examples of how a child with sensory processing disorder affect how it affects them how they live their life have you ever been in a situation where somebody had on really really strong perfume and even if that perfume smelled nice it was just being overwhelmed by the smell because the person they didn't just dab it on they kind of bathe in it well with a child with sensory processing disorder their sense of smell is so heightened that all perfume feels like people have bathed in it, that they can smell it really strong. Not just perfume, food, smoke, anything that you can smell, their sense of smell is so heightened that everything feels and smells overwhelming. So it, if, if you're cooking hot dogs, it smells like somebody is bathing in hot dog juice. You know, if, if you're... You know, uh, if they are, you know, somebody smoking around them, it, it smells like 10, 20 people are smoking and blowing it right into their face because their sense of smell is so heightened. Hearing. Again, when my children had their hearing tested, they, their hearing was off the chart. Literally, they were hearing at the top of the scale. The highest that the scale could measure for a human, my children could hear at those levels. So we don't know exactly how sensitive their hearing is. And so when you're in a situation like that, it can be overwhelming in a classroom setting because think about how many side conversations go on, not just in a classroom, but in a restaurant, 
um, when, at Chuck E. Cheese, when you are, you know, riding a subway, when you're on a plane, all those side conversations, and they could hear them all. They can hear somebody rattling paper. They can hear somebody trying to open up a bag of chips. They can hear somebody, you know, crunching on popcorn. And it just is overwhelming because the sound never stops. Lights, seeing, yes, you know, most people can see, but they are, children with sensory processing, their vision is so keen and they have such a sensitivity to light that being in a really bright environment, it can be overwhelming. Being at a place like an arcade, that can be completely overwhelming to the senses. I know my twins had one of their biggest meltdowns at a birthday party where the room was darkened and they gave everybody glow sticks and all the machines were just bright and lights and all that kind of stuff and they just absolutely could not take it. It was it was way too much on their senses and they had complete meltdowns. They just couldn't deal with it. The sense of touch. Imagine if a hug felt like somebody was trying to choke you or somebody gently pushing you. It felt like they were trying to shove you down a flight of stairs or if somebody, you know, gave you a pat on the back and it felt like it felt like they punched you. A lot of times children with sensory processing disorder, they will complain incessantly about tags in their clothes because you know how you feel when you have a bite or a itch that you can't get to and it's just so annoying because you feel it that's how tags on the back of their clothes feel a lot of times kids with sensory processing disorder their socks oh my goodness can you imagine feeling your socks all day long they are just overwhelmed with the sensory input so while their senses put them at an advantage because they're still learning through their senses so getting information and and taking in information from just experiencing life puts them at an advantage information wise because they have not learned how to block and control and make that world smaller it becomes overwhelming and it becomes a disadvantage for instance we were kind of surprised when we had my daughter's hearing tested because we had been thinking that she had a, a hearing disability, that she couldn't hear. What was happening was her hearing was so sensitive that in order to save her sanity, her brain started to shut down the hearing process. So because she was getting so much information, because she was hearing, you know, birds chirping, crickets, owls, dogs, plus every conversation in a room, plus conversations in the room next to us, because she was hearing all that and it was becoming overwhelming, the only thing her body could do was just shut it down. Just stop it. So she would be sitting there and she would just shut down her hearing. And that was a survival mechanism. And it was really overwhelming with her. Um, my kids' periphery vision is really bad with them. And that's because when they were really young, they were taking in so much information through their senses, through their through their sight, and just seeing everything, seeing every little detail in the room, that it became overwhelming. So they had very they ended up shutting down to the point where they had very little periphery vision. We've had to do vision therapy just to try to regain some of their periphery vision. It was a survival mode and a survival process that the kids were doing because that which was kind of the means of their ability was becoming a disability as the world got bigger and that's the reason why a lot of gifted children who suffer from sensory processing disorder do find themselves in homeschool situations because just like that going back to my superman scene what happened when kyle went to the coat closet the first thing that happened was the teacher came out with the whole class and everybody's going, wow, he's crazy. What's wrong with him? Something's wrong with that kid. And the teacher's like, come on out. you know. And she wasn't trying to be mean. She just really didn't understand what he was going through. And so instead of allowing him space to deal with it, it just brought the sensory overload right to him. And everybody was thinking, that kid's crazy. He doesn't know how to function. 
and his response was one of anger his response was one where he was going to force um, people to leave him alone and to the point where he you know the teacher was getting hurt who came to the rescue mama and his mom realized what I need to do is I need to talk to him I need to show him how to make this world smaller for him how to help him control his environment how to help him get a handle on his senses and so our children with sensory processing disorder to the world sometimes they look autistic to the world sometimes they look crazy to the world sometimes they look immature you know why is why is this child five years old and they're having a meltdown because they are being overloaded by things that you just can't imagine and so we know that we have to create environments in which they can thrive until they learn that control and sensory processing disorder is one of those things that it's so hard for people to understand because if my child had a peanut allergy people will understand that okay if this child is exposed to peanuts then they can be hurt so I we need to say that this is going to be a peanut free classroom and no one can bring peanuts because we care about the life of this child so we will you know not engage in that behavior nobody gets it when you say can you deal with the lights a little bit because that's messing with my child or you know can 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 he please stay in the timeout corner because that's going to be the best place for him you know can can his seat be the timeout corner can because that's going to be the the best environment for him they don't understand that and so we have to work really hard to make the environment a space that's going to be okay for the child and safe for the child until they learn how to handle and control their senses and get the benefit from the heightened sensory processing and balance the overwhelmingness that comes with it. So that's just, I hope, give you a really quick glimpse into what sensory processing disorder is like. Um, I talk about it with gifted children just because that tends to be the population that we see sensory processing disorder the most. We see it m m more consistently in children with um, who are gifted and we see it to much more of an extreme. And this is also one of the reasons why gifted children are often misdiagnosed with things like ADHD and um, autism and Asperger's because what's really happening is it's a version of sensory processing disorder. but it looks like something else because people may not be as in tune to what are the kind of the weaknesses that come with the gifted label. So I hope this was uh, good information that could give you a glimpse into this world. I'll do some more videos on this um, as well. Thanks a lot. This is Dr. J from DAG, DAJ. Bye-bye.